Hi everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey. As you know, photography is all about light. The word photography means drawing or painting with light. But it's also about the absence of light. Highlights and shadows and all of the tones in between map out forms that make up the things we see in our world. Masking in on one photo raw also works on this premise. Just like the sun shining on an object, the brightest white of a mask will make the underlying layer or effect most visible. When the sun disappears and night begins, objects become hard to discern, and if it gets dark enough, will disappear from sight. Similarly, in masking, black hides the underlying layer or effect and renders it invisible. I've covered the basics of masking in previous tutorials, and I thought it was about time to talk about a more advanced type of mask. The terms lumen, luminosity, and luminance all refer to light. A luminosity mask is basically a map of all the lights and darks in an image. So when you look at it, you'll see a monochrome version of the photograph. Let's take a look at what I mean. I'll open up this image in effects. I'm going to apply an HDR filter and then I am going to take a look at the luminosity mask. So in On One Photo Raw it's called Lumen but it's the same thing as a luminosity mask so if I click that it will create a luminosity mask. Now nothing has changed here because we need to view it to see the actual mask so press view here and we can see that that's just basically a black and white version of the image. If I toggle the view off and on you'll see there's the original image and there's the luminosity mask and it is literally just a black and white version. So when you first look at a luminosity mask like I said it just looks like a black and white version of your image. That makes sense when you think about it because now we're just looking at blacks, whites and grays. So let's just forget the terminology for a moment and examine the mask. Everything that's white is going to get the full effect of the, the uh, HDR look right? And everything that's black, because in masking black is invisible, will not get the effect at all. And anything that is in between will get a partial effect. So the ones that are dark or gray, because they're closer to black, will get less of the effect. And the ones that are lighter gray, because they're closer to white, will get more of the effect. Now let's take a look at the controls associated with the luminosity mask. First of all, down here we have the window slider. The window sliders act like curtains on an actual window. What the curtains are doing, in fact, is narrowing the tonal selection. The more you move the sliders towards the middle, the narrower your selection until you only have the mid-tones in between the sliders. So if I move the black slider, for instance, it's making everything back here black. And when I move over the highlight sliders to the middle, Again, it's just really honing in on what is in between here, and this is what's being selected. And at this point, you can see that it's largely just the mid-tones. So we've basically um, cut out the, the shadows and we've cut out the, the um, highlights, and we're focusing on, on the, on the mid-tones. Now, this, I usually work with this in tandem with the levels controls, which I'll discuss in a minute. I don't find this to be a particularly efficient tool in terms of my own uh, work habits, so I don't really use it that much. There is a purpose for it, um, but I'm really not going to concentrate on that in this particular tutorial. So I'm just going to reset it by double clicking the, the word window. A uh, far more useful tool for me is the levels controls. And they work just like levels in uh, Photoshop or any of those other tools where you are fine-tuning the contrast, essentially, or uh, manipulating the, the blacks and the whites and the mid-tones. So in a case like this, um, you know, this, this will help me to uh, really kind of hone in on certain areas of the, of the image that I want to apply the effect to. So let me show you how that works. So basically, when I go to the um, black slider down here and I move it towards the middle, Everything that is to the left of this particular slider is turning black. So if I don't want this uh, foreground area to be um, selected by the, the filter, then by moving this to the right, I'm deselecting all of that area because it's black. And remember, in masking, um, black makes the effect invisible. 
So similarly, if I push over the highlight slider to the left, I'm making it wider and wider. And that means that the effect will be more intense the wider it gets. So by manipulating this, uh, these two tools here, uh, these two sliders, I should say, um, you're beginning to really fine tune the selection. And you can also use the mid-tone slider as well to further um, tune that. And you can see, you really just have to do this visually and see exactly what it is you want to, to, um, to uh, select. So in this case, uh, what I'm actually looking to select is everything aside from the sky, because when I use uh, an effect like HDR, which to be honest, I don't use all that much, but if I'm using something similar to that, then I don't want the clouds in the sky uh, going really crunchy with too much effect. So I will generally apply the effect to um, areas other than the sky. So the intention here is basically to uh, deselect the sky so that um, the effect will only apply it, it will be applied elsewhere in the picture. So I'm doing that by basically manipulating this until I can see that most of the sky is white. Now, what is going on here. You just I just said that I wanted to, to um, deselect the sky. Well, um, what I'm going to do is, um, first of all, get this so that um, the sky is completely white, and then I'm going to invert it. So when I invert this, what happens is uh, the sky goes black, which is exactly what I want. And also the reflection of the sky and the water goes black too, which is perfect because they're related. So um, you can see that everything in the foreground and the bridge is uh, white. That means that that will get the full extent of the, the effect. And this clearly demonstrates the power of a luminosity mask. It, it shows why, and particularly in a case like this that's uh, got a lot of complex shapes, um, why it's really efficient to do this, because you can imagine trying to select all of the places in between this bridge um, with a brush and uh, you'd never be able to do it right. And this uh, does that work for you. So in a case like this, you know, in, in just a very quick few steps, I was able to deselect the sky and have everything else selected. Now, if I go to view, we can see that um, if I push the effect up a little bit so you can see what's happening. Um, so all, all the effects that I'm doing here are just affecting the, uh, the foreground, everything aside from the sky. And I'm just going to exaggerate everything a little bit so you can see. So, if I go up here and toggle this on and off, you can see that everything is being affected, but the sky is not. And that's exactly what I want. And that's all thanks to this luminosity mask that you can see right here. All right, now, what if I want to just affect the sky and not affect uh, the foreground? Well, you know, I, I'd say, let's say I'm gonna use a different filter for that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna copy this mask we don't need to do this whole thing again. I'll go back to the view of the image. And let's add a tone enhancer. And let's uh, open up the mask and we're gonna hit paste. Now, if we look at the mask again, we'll see that this, the sky is still deselected and that's not what we want. In this case, we actually want to select the sky. So I'm gonna hit invert again. And now we can see all this white here is representing the sky and that will get the full effect of the uh, of the filter because it's white. So uh, take the view off and we can just do a little manipulation here to show you what's happening. Um, just bring down the exposure a little bit, bring up the contrast, um, maybe bring up the highlights, and maybe a little bit on the whites there. I'm just watching the histogram too so it doesn't go off. Um, the other thing you can do is you can hold down the J key and make sure that uh, when you're pushing your whites or your blacks that you're not crushing them or blowing them out. Um, in this case, I can see on the histogram that I'm fine. So again, this is just affecting the sky. There is, it is not affecting the foreground at all, as you can see. Okay, so if we look at the before and the after, you can see in, in very quick steps, we were able to uh, manipulate the sky and uh, the foreground separately. And we were able to punch through all of those little intricate areas that you see up in the bridge uh, with very little work. So that just basically demonstrates the power of the luminosity mask. You can do it in with many different things and um, depending on the, on the image itself, uh, it's perfect for targeting very specific areas. 
So that's just a very basic idea of uh, what you can do with the luminosity mask. There are other controls that I will be covering in future uh, tutorials like the feathering and the density and um, there are other types of uh, selections that we can do in masking and again that's my intention uh, with, with future tutorials to, to get more into that. But for now that's just the basics of uh, luminosity. Before I go I want to share a quick tip. Uh, this may be more relevant to portrait retouching, but it could have an application in landscape work too. So let's say that you've done a lot of retouching, removing blemishes and dust spots, etc. And in fact, I'll just, I've got to see one little spot here and I'll just kind of demonstrate that real quick. So we'll just zoom in here. This little dust spot here, I'm going to um, just, I'll get rid of this. Just like that. Okay, so let's say that I've done a whole bunch of dust removal or, or in a portrait that I've done um, a, a lot of retouching and now it's getting to the point where um, it's becoming really obvious. Let's say the skin is overdone and, and you want to kind of start from scratch but you've added all these other filters and you don't want to remove all of that and start, or start over. You just literally want to remove all the, um, the retouching that you've done. So... Is there a way to do that? Well, there actually is. So you can go up to Settings and select Reset All Retouching Tools. And if you do that, the only thing that's, go that's going to reset is uh, all those little dust spots and, and skin, skin blemishes that you fixed. And you can see that this dust spot has returned, but um, the image itself uh, with all of the various effects that I did on it are st is still intact. So you'll probably rarely use this, but for that one time you really need it, you might just remember this tip. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like it below. Also, if you like what I'm doing with these tutorials, please consider subscribing. Until next time, thanks for watching.